Wings of fire shooting through the sky. Wings of fire, see how high they fly. Hey, hey, gorilla, what are you doing here? This is my spot. Here. Although I love the dragon hat, big gorilla. Move everything here. Ah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the next installment of Wings of Fire. Before I get started, I do have permission from Scholastic to read this book to you guys today. In today's installment, we are reading chapter 11 of Wings of Fire, the Dragonette Prophecy. So, to recap a little bit from last chapter, we know Tsunami and Clay escape the cave. Remember, they were living in that cave for six years and they finally escaped. Now they're going to try to go back and get the other dragonettes, get their friends so that they can escape as well. Uh, however, they ran into a little trouble last chapter. Well, first, they ran into their first scavenger, um, which they thought was really interesting. Remember, scavengers are humans. And then uh, somebody, <clears throat> somebody shows up at the very end of the chapter it is a Skywing. And that Skywing turned out to be Queen Scarlet, Queen of the Skywings. Now, just to review with you guys real quick. Remember, the war going on is between the three Sandwing sisters. Okay, we have Burn, Blister, and Blaze. We're going to look at the Burn column here because Burn, the Sandwing sister, is allied with the Skywings and the Mudwings. So Queen Scarlet is allied with Queen Burn. Now, Queen Scarlet, she's going to be a pretty prominent character in this whole series. So we will do a character sheet for her as well. And we can list out some of her traits. Uh, although, first impressions, judging by how quickly she killed that scavenger and without remorse, um, I would say Queen Scarlet is pretty, uh, pretty vicious. But we'll see how she handles seeing the Dragonettes of Destiny. So here we go. Chapter 11. <clears throat> she was smaller than he had expected, smaller than Kestrel, but Clay knew they shouldn't underestimate the Skywing, Skywing Queen. She had held on to her power for 30 years, despite 14 brave, foolish, extremely dead now challengers. So just to pause real quick. That this shows you, even though uh, Queen Scarlet isn't as big as like Kestrel is, or like the biggest dragon, she's been in power for 30 years. She's been the queen for 30 years, and she's had 14 other Skywings try to challenge her for the throne, and none have succeeded. She was one of the longest lived and deadliest queens in Pyria, not to mention one of the worst possible dragons to get her claws on the Dragonettes of Destiny, especially since she was, she was allied with Burn, who hated the prophecy and had destroyed the Skywing Egg six years ago. If you guys remember that from the, pro, uh, the prologue, that was uh, Queen Burn who destroyed the Skywing Egg. Clay tried to remember anything else they'd learned about Scarlet. All he could think was scary. Queen Scarlet let go of Tsunami's talons and slipped the medallion over her own neck. She turned and ran one claw down Clay's snout. Now you, Mudwing, make me curious. We're on the same side, so why don't why didn't you recognize me? <clears throat> uh, like I said, Tsunami started. Queen Scarlet start Queen Scarlet silenced her with a flick of the tail. I like to hear the mudwings speak, she said, all rumbly and deep and nervous. We, uh, Clay stammered, oh, we've been uh, underground uh, a while, kind of uh, always. Tsunami made a face at him behind the queen's back, which he guessed meant that he shouldn't give too much away. But what was he supposed to say? He glanced up at the mountains looming overhead and realized that they were outlined with a golden glow. The sun was coming up. They needed to go rescue their friends and fast before Kestrel took out her anger on the dragonettes she could find. Uh, <clears throat> we're just uh, passing through, he said to Queen Scarlet. 
the rows of rubies over the queen's eyes arched disbelievingly. I mean, uh, well, it was an honor to meet. Uh, I, I, it was very uh, terrifying was the only word he could think of. Well, uh, uh, we have to go, he blurted. Already, said the queen, but that's heartbreaking. I hate being abandoned mid-conversation. There's so much more I want to know about you. She brushed the tip of her claw along the bottom of Clay's chin. I think the only place you should go is back to my palace in the sky. Doesn't that sound thrilling? Don't say no. It'll hurt my feelings. You're just what I've been looking for. Clay had no idea what that meant, but he was too petrified to respond anyway. He stared up into her unfriendly amber eyes, thinking for the first time in his life that maybe Kestrel was right about everything most especially about staying under the mountain and avoiding all the, all the bad dragons out in this world. Behind Scarlet, Tsunami raised the scavenger's sharp claw. Her eyes met Clay's. He felt the same chilling fear she must be feeling. If they attacked the Skywing Queen, they'd instantly have a new powerful enemy that hated them. But they couldn't tell her the truth about themselves. She'd take them captive or sell them to her ally Burn or kill them with or kill them just to mess with the prophecy. And they couldn't go with her either. They had to get back to her friends. Uh, to their friends. He nodded silently. Do it. We have no choice. Tsunami stabbed the claw through Queen Scarlet's tail at the vulnerable spot, driving it straight into the ground beneath. The queen roared with fury and pain. She whipped her head around and blasted fire in all directions. Fly! Tsunami yelled. She rolled under the flames and shoved Clay's tail. He spread his wings and bolted into the sky, with Queen Scarlet's fire scorching his claws. Tsunami flapped beside him, her wing beats wobbly but determined. <clears throat> it won't take her long to get free, Tsunami called. Quick, we have to lose her in the peaks. She soared up into the cliff and Clay followed. They flew past the top of the waterfall, where the river flowed out of the hole in the cliff. They flew up, they flew up and up until they reached the top and whooshed out onto a rocky pl a plateau studded with dark green trees and bushes. Even up here, the mountains loomed over them, impossibly high and unbearably big. The peaks zigzagged to the north and south like crooked dragon teeth, a jagged row that went on and on and on. The bigness of everything kept overwhelming Clay. How would they ever find their friends again in all of this? And even if they did, what could five dragonets do to save a world this big? Tsunami led the way, staying low and swooping around trees, diving into chasms where they found them. Her wing beats getting stronger as she flew. Sunlight spread across the mountains, dazzling Clay's eyes. He wasn't used to so much brightness, and this was only dawn. The ferocity of the day, of the midday sun, was still ahead. Here! Tsunami called, jerking her head toward a dent in the side of the mountain. They spiraled down to land on the ledge outside the small cave. From here, they could look over the rocky plateau, with valleys and mountain peaks spread out around them. Clay peered down nervously. The roar of the waterfall was, faint, was a faint rumble in the distance. There was no sign of Queen Scarlet. I can't believe you did that, he said to Tsunami. I had to, didn't I? She asked, but without her usual conviction. She scratched at her gills looking worried, then slipped into the shadows of the cave to check that it was empty. Clay wanted to reassure her, but he was worried too. He closed his eyes and turned a face toward the rising sun. The heat soaked down through, the, through his scales until even his bones felt warm at last. <clears throat> you should see yourself, Tsunami said, said from the cave. You're practically glowing. I didn't know mud wings had so many colors in them. Clay opened his eyes and glanced down. He'd always thought of himself as just brown, plain brown scales, ordinary brown claws, the color of flat mud from horns to tail. But now, in the full sunlight for the first time, he could see gold and amber glints between and beneath his scales. Even the brown seemed richer and deeper, like the mahogany trunk where webs kept the most delicate scrolls. Huh, he said. You're so pretty, Tsunami joked, emerging into the light. Clay had to bite back a gasp. While the sun brought out his colors, it made her look bejeweled, like a dragon made of, made of sapphires and emeralds and summer leaves and oceans. 
He thought of Glory and how beautiful she already was in the gloomy caves. None of them would be able to look at her in the full sunlight, or else they'd be too dazzled to ever speak to her again. Glory. Clay squinted at the mountainside. There were crags and holes and rocky outcroppings that might lead to tunnels everywhere. He had no idea what the outside of their home looked like. They could see a lot of the mountain from here, but no smoke signal yet. The sun had nearly cleared the horizon now, climbing slowly up the sky and chasing away the three moons. Clay saw several red shapes flitting around the distant mountain peaks. At first, he thought they were birds, until he spotted fire flicking around them like lightning, and he realized they were dragons. This was definitely Skywing territory. Starflight was right about where their secret cave was, but Clay had no idea how they'd escape the mountains now that the Skywing Queen was probably hunting them in a towering rage. Tsunami seized his shoulder. Over there, she cried, pointing. A thin column of smoke was starting to rise from a hole partway down the slope. Clay flung himself into the air and swooped over to the hole. It was enclosed and partly hidden by a thicket of branches, so he couldn't land next to it, but it was open to the sky and looked like the shape of the sky hole to him. They had to be his friends. Tsunami swept up beside him. They both hovered around the smoke, trying to peer down into the hole. Starflight and Sunny must be right there, Clay said. Right below us! The smoke smelled of old paper. He felt a twinge of pity for Starflight, burning some of his beloved scrolls. <clears throat> so we're close, but we have to find the entrance, Tsunami said. The tunnel must come out somewhere nearby. She spiraled down to the rocky ground outside the bushes. She started pacing as if she were trying to count off the distance from the study room to the entrance tunnel. Clay stayed up in the air, circling. He had the same funny feeling he'd had looking at Tsunami's crooked wing, that if he relaxed and just looked around, he could see how things should fit together. He walked the caves under mountains a million times. He knew them better than his own claws. <clears throat> he could still hear the faint roar of the waterfall, so he could guess which way the underground river flowed. He pictured the tunnel from the study cave to the central hall and mapped it out on the, on the craggy rocks below. Here, he called to Tsunami, swooping down to land. The boulder blocking the exit should be right below here, so the tunnel to the outside would go that way. He turned to look. The ravine, Tsunami said, a crevasse cut into the rocks a short distance away. They peered down, they peered down into it. They could see a stream running over pebbly gravel and sandy mud. The entrance must be down there somewhere. Clay hopped down to the bottom of the ravine, keeping his wings spread to slow his fall. Mud squelched between his talons as he landed. He felt a wave of anger wash over him. Here was mud and sunlight and warm, fresh air, this close to their cave. Why hadn't the guardians, their teachers, ever brought the dragonettes outside? Even small trips to this ravine would have made life so different. He knew they'd say it was for safety. They'd say it was to protect the dragonettes in case distant Skywing spotted them. But Clay guessed it was really because the Guardians didn't trust him and his friends. They didn't trust them not to fly away. They didn't trust them to act smart and avoid drawing attention to themselves. He dug sharp gashes in the mud with his claws. The Dragonettes had never had a chance to be trustworthy. Maybe Clay didn't deserve it after attacking the others at hatching. Maybe the Guardians thought that something inside him might snap at any moment. But there was no reason to have Sunny and Glory and Starflight and Tsunami in the dark all these years. Tsunami thumped down beside him and nodded at the mossy pile of boulders up ahead. Let's check there first. They squished and splashed down the stream. Clay spotted something in the mud in front of them. He flared his wings up to stop Tsunami from going any further. Look, he said, dragon tracks. Fresh dragon prints were stamped into the riverbank, with the deep line of a tail dragged between them. They spotted, they disappeared suddenly as if the dragon had lifted off into the sky. Clay gingerly felt uh, fit one of his own feet into a print. It was dwarfed by the size of another dragon's talons. It came from our cave, Tsunami said. These prints came from our cave, and I'm sure it did. Then, it must be Kestrel's prints in the sand. How do you know? Clay asked. Tsunami put down her foot next to one of the prints. No webs between the claws, she said. So it's not 
so it's not a sea wing. They're too recent to be Maro seers from yesterday. And you can see from all, you can see all four feet here. So it's not doom. Oh, Clay said, feeling foolish. Uh, of course. There are prints leaving, but there are no prints coming back into the cave, Tsunami said, her voice rising with excitement. Maybe she went out looking for us this morning. If she stole away, this is our best chance to get the others out. She started running down the riverbank following the lines of prints to where it began. Come on, Clay, hurry! Clay raced after her. The tracks led right to a tumble of boulders. When they climbed up into, onto the larger rocks, they could see down into a dark tunnel in the side of a ravine. It was almost entirely hidden from view, unless you looked, unless you looked from the right angle. This is it, Tsunami whispered. Why didn't she hide her tracks better, Clay worried. What if this is a trap? It's not, Tsunami said confidently. Kestrel doesn't know if we're coming back for the others. She doesn't think like that. If she were one of us, she'd escape and leave everyone else behind without a second thought. That sounded very true to Clay. Kestrel never believed that the dragons could keep their word or care about other dragons. She was in a hurry to find us, that's all, Tsunami pointed out. Clay glanced up at the sky anxiously. If Kestrel hadn't bothered to be cautious, she must be really angry with them. Tsunami lowered herself into the tunnel, and Clay slid down beside her. He was warm enough now to make a fire, so he breathed a small burst of flame to give them a glimpse of the tunnel ahead. They edged forward as Tsunami's scales began to glow. The tunnel took a sharp right, then a left, then went down at a steep angle for a few steps. But soon, it straightened out, took them around another corner, and ended at an enormous gray boulder. Clay's heart thumped hard in his chest. They'd really found their cave. He was looking at his prison from the outside. And that's the end of the chapter. So uh, they were able to escape, uh, escape Queen Scarlet, uh, which is good. However, uh, they escaped Queen Scarlet by Tsunami taking the sword from the scavengers and stabbing it into her tail and pinning her to the ground. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if I was Queen Scarlet, I'd be really upset by that. And remember, she's the queen of the Skywings, and she's been the queen for 30 years. So she's really powerful. Um, they just made themselves a really powerful enemy. Not that Queen Scarlet might have been nice to her anyway. She wanted to bring them back to her palace to do who knows what. Uh, but now they just made her even angrier. Uh, and on top of that, uh, so they were able to escape, which is good, and they were able to find their cave. So hopefully everything's okay, and hopefully they're able to get their other Dragonette friends out of the cave. That's all for today, and I will see you guys next time. Bye, everybody. Miss you guys.